Thank you very much indeed. Hello, I'm Alexander Armstrong and welcome to Pointless, the quiz show where the aim of the game is to score as few points as you can. And to do that, you need to come up with the answers that no one else could think of. Let's meet today's players. <laughs> Couple number one. Hi, I'm Alex. This is my auntie Vicky and we're from Derbyshire. Couple number... Oh, yes. <laughs> this just happens sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> you get spontaneous applause. Yeah. <laughs> for things like Derbyshire. <laughs> but I think you said before, it's the way you say it sometimes. Yeah, I think and I so. think Alex said it in a very... That was very impressively done. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, well done. Couple number two, beat that. Hi, I'm Ian. Uh, this is my lovely wife, Jessica. And we're from Rygate in Surrey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it nearly oh, didn't happen. That was a sympathy clap. It, that was. <laughs> <laughs> Couple number three. Hi, I'm Chris. This is my friend David. And we're from Ride on the Isle of Wight. Yeah! That's the way to do it. All in the inflection. That's the way to do it. And couple number four. Hi, I'm Sam. I'm from London. This is my friend Becky from Surrey, and we used to work together and became firm friends. <laughs> and these, ladies and gentlemen, are today's contestants. Thank you all. We'll find out more about all of you throughout the show as it goes along. Uh, that just leaves one more person for me to introduce. He's a man whose IQ has more digits than his phone number. It's my pointless friend. It's Richard. Hiya. <laughs> Hiya. Oh, how are you? I'm very well. Excellent. Yeah, how about you? Yeah, I'm not bad at all. Uh, I just came all the way from West London. <laughs> Thank you. How about you? Again, but from, from West London, I can't, I can't tag onto that. Can you not? I can't get sort of West London sort of second round clap. I, that's not going to... Now, we've got two returning pairs today. We've got uh, David and Chris and we've got Becky and Sam. And they were, uh, they were both involved in just a shocking round last time, weren't they? Shakespeare. It was mm. pretty much the worst round we've ever had on any pointless show in history, I would say. It was, come on. It was pretty bad, wasn't it? It wasn't that good. <laughs> Actually, Becky and Sam were just about the only people who came out of it with any credit yeah. whatsoever, weren't yeah. they? So I've made today a Shakespeare special, just <laughs> because I think we should learn on it. I haven't really. You'd be uh, delighted to hear. Uh, thanks, Richard. Now, all our questions on point have been put to 100 people before the show. Our contestants need to find the obscure answers those 100 people didn't get. Now, everyone's trying to find a pointless answer, of course, which is an answer that none of our 100 people gave, and each time that happens, we will add 250 quid to the jackpot. Now, Cliff and Alan didn't win our jackpot last time, so we had another £1,000 to that, so today's jackpot starts off at £3,000. There we are. Right, if everyone's ready, let's play Pointless. OK, in this first round, I'm going to take an answer from each of you, but there's no conferring. Whichever pair has the highest score at the end of the round, of course, will be eliminated. Uh, so our first category today is... Song titles. Song titles. Can you decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, and the question concerns UK number one singles with the word love in the title. UK number ones with the word love in the title. Richard? Yeah, it's a good question, this one. Uh, on each pass, we're going to show you the name of seven groups uh, with a year in brackets. We need you to tell us the name of the number one single they had in that year that had the word love in the title, please. There's going to be 14 number one singles to guess in all at home. Very, very best of luck. OK, so we are looking for the names of these number one singles with love in the title, and here is our first board. We have got Soft Cell, 1981, The House Martins, 1986, The Supremes, 1964, Frankie Goes to Hollywood, 1984, Shawadi Wadi, 1976, Donna Summer, 1977, and Leona Lewis, 2007. I'll read those one last time. Soft Cell, 1981, The House Martins, 1986, The Supremes, 1964, Frankie Goes to Hollywood, 1984, Shawadi Woody, 1976, Donna Summer, 1977, and Leona Lewis, 2007. There. Now, Vicky and Alex, you all drew lots before the show. And today, you're going first. Um, so, Vicky. Hello. Remind us where you're from? Um, Derbyshire. And what do you do, Vicky? Um, I work for a bank. You work for a bank, but also, you are Alex's aunt, which I, I gather certainly that's am, apparently. also full-time. Totally. <laughs> yeah. It's hard um, work. I bet. Yeah, I bet. Really. Who, who, whose idea was it to come on the show? Mine, unfortunately. And Alex, was it first choice? Totally, yeah. OK, good. Really? Yeah. Now then, Vicky, singles with love in their title. Yes. Um, this is not a good subject for me, so I think I'm going to have to go for 
the Supremes and guess at baby love. Baby love, says Vicky, baby love. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said baby love. It's right. Very well done. Oh, it's a good score. Look at that, 30. Not bad at all, Vicky. 30 for baby love. A lovely start to the show, Vicky. Well played. It was their only UK number one, the Supremes. They had 12 American number ones, just one in the UK. Jessica, welcome to the show. Uh, what do you do, Jessica? I'm a GP. And what do you like getting up to when you're not being a doctor? Well, I really like um, nature and... Um... Uh, we used to breed snakes, actually, um, so that was something we stopped doing, but um, we did that. So, hang on, what sort of snakes did you breed? Uh, we had corn snakes and trinket snakes, and we had oh, a king trinket snake. snakes. Oh, Lovely. they sound Lovely. sweet, don't they? <laughs> yeah, what, what, do they look, what do corn snakes look like? Are they... um, they're sort of orangey-red and, and white. Well, I mean, they sort of, they're not pythons, feet. are they? No, they're not, no, I, like no. Those, uh, I like those crunchy nut corn snakes. <laughs> you? <laughs> uh, so then, Jessica, what are you going to go for? Um, also not a brilliant round from me, but I'm going to go for Soft Cell and Tainted Love. Tainted Love, says Jessica. Let's see if that's right for Soft Cell, and if it is, let's see how many people said Tainted Love. It's right. Well, 30 is our best score so far. Tainted Love, 35. <laughs> not bad at all. Yeah, big hit in the UK. Also spent 43 weeks in the US charts as well. That's a great song, Tainted Love. It, it is a great song, yeah. Chris, welcome back to the show. Now, remind us, what happened with you last time? We made it look ridiculously easy and joined the 200 Club. <laughs> yes, that's right. Uh, Chris, you're, you're a bit more subdued today. Yeah, I um, you, you toned had... it down for the second show. Yeah, very good. I thought good. I'd drop the role of eye candy for the show and, you know, go, go play the intellectual card this time. OK, very, no, very, very sensible. Of course, you are a school teacher, as we discovered last time. I am. Modern languages. Yep. Excellent. Now, then, we are looking for the UK number one singles with the words love in their titles by these artists. What are you going to go for? Well, I would have gone for either of those two, um, but I'm going to go with Shawaddy Waddy and Under the Moon of Love. Under the Moon of Love, says Chris. Let's see if that's right, and if it is, let's see how many people said Under the Moon of Love. It is right. Well, 30 is our best score so far. Smash through that. Look at that. 18. Very well done, Chris. 18 for Shawadi what is under the moon of love. Yeah, well done, Chris. It's their only UK number one, though. They had 23 top 40 hits. They only had one number one. Yeah. Extraordinary. Uh, Sam, welcome back to the show. Uh, remind us what you do, Sam. Uh, I work uh, for a hotel company that has hotels in Mauritius and the Maldives, um, so I do sales marketing for the hotels, but I work here. Not you sure. work here? Yeah. Um, and what do you like getting up to in your spare time? Um, I like doing a bit of cycling, a bit of military fitness. Um, I'm cycling from London to Paris um, at some point this year for charity. How long are you hoping that'll take? Um, well, probably it's meant to take three days. It'll probably take me three weeks. <laughs> Give it a go. Three days, hopefully. OK. Now then, this, you're the last person to have this board, so why not uh, fill in as many of those blanks as you can? Absolutely can't fill it in. I can't remember that Leona Lewis song. It's really annoying. Um, I'm going to have to go for the Donna Summer one, and hopefully it's I Feel Love. I Feel Love. OK, well, let's see if that's right, and if it is, let's see how many people said I Feel Love. <laughs> 24. Very well done. Second lowest score of the pass. Good answer, Sam. Well played everyone that round. Actually, again, that's uh, our only UK number one, I Feel Love. Now, the rest of the board, uh, how well are you going to do at this? Frankie goes to Hollywood. Power of Love. The power of Love, yep. 30 points. Leona Lewis, do you know the Leona Bleeding Lewis? Love. Bleeding Love, yes. Nine points. And the best answer on the board is the House Martins. Oh, um, Caravan. Yeah, Caravan of, of love. love. There we Absolutely. go. Absolutely, yeah. Scored seven points, so well done if you said that at home. There we go. Brilliant. Excellent. There we are, halfway through the round. Let's take a look at those scores. 18, the best score of that pass, Chris. Very well done. Then up to 24, where we find Sam and Becky. Up to 30, Vicky and Alex. Up to 35, Jessica and Ian. You're not stupidly ahead, Ian, there, but uh, a nice slow score from you might be enough to keep you in the game at the end of the round. We're going to come back down the line now. Can the second players please take their places at the podium? OK, we're going to put seven more artists on the board, and here they are. We have got 
Jennifer Rush, 1985, Dusty Springfield, 1966, 10CC, 1975, Beyonce, 2003, Wet, 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 1994, Renee and Renato, 1982, and Stevie Wonder, 1984. I'll read those one last time. Jennifer Rush, 1985, Dusty Springfield, 1966, 10CC, 1975, Beyonce, 2003, Wet, 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 1994, Rene and Renato, 1982, and Stevie Wonder, 1984. Now then, Becky, you're going to try and remember the name of the UK number one single with the word love in it, and you're going to try and guess the one you think the fewest of our 100 people knew. Right. Well, you're on 24. <laughs> the high score is on 35 at Ian and Jessica, so a score of 10 or less will prevent you from becoming the new high scorers. So, Becky, you are, uh, you are a mother. I am, yeah. And a full-time mother at the moment. Yes. Um, is music a big interest of yours? I do like listening to music in the car, on the radio, and, yeah, passes the time. <laughs> are you good at remembering things? That's no. The, right. <laughs> I'm afraid not, no. It sort of goes in and goes straight out again. <laughs> but um, I think I know two. It's okay. just deciding which one is the least points. Um, I think I'll go for Beyoncé. And it is crazy in love. Crazy in love. Crazy in love. Here is your red line. Below that, you are through to the next round. Let's see if crazy in love's right. Let's see how many people said it. It is right. Oh, look at that. Wow, five. Very well done indeed, Becky. We're very surprised by that. Five takes your total up to 29, sees you through to the next round. Lovely low score, that, isn't it? It was number one in the UK and the US, the only song to do that in, uh, in that year, in 2003. David, welcome back to the show. Thank you. Uh, now then, you're a PE teacher, David, or you I were a PE teacher. I was a PE teacher, yes. Yes. Remind us what you do now. Um, I'm retired. I sing with an Irish Cayley band. So um, where do you sing? Where do you do your singing? Oh, pubs, clubs, weddings, anywhere they'll have us, really. And uh, are you Irish? I'm not, or... no. I'm, a, I'm part Scottish, but... I'm Celtic enough. <laughs> you have to be Celtic above <laughs> this <Yes>. Celticness to get <laughs> in the Gailey band. So, what, what do you say? What's your favourite song that you sing? Probably Whiskey in the Jar or Galway Girl. But um, how many of you are there in the band? There's seven of us when we're all there. Very good. So, what are they? Have you got, you got a Baron? A Baran yeah. player, yes, we have a Baran. A Baran, sorry. A Baran player, yes, we have a Baran. And uh, accordions? And a fiddler. Fiddle. No, flute, fiddle, a couple of guitars, mandolin, uh, and I'm a whiz on the tambourine. Brilliant. We've got two Baran players in my band. Oh, what, like sort of the Adam and the Ants of Cayley bands? Yeah, we're called Baran Baran. <laughs> <laughs> David, uh, well, you're on 18. The high scorers on 35 are still Ian and Jessica. A score of 16 or less keeps you in the game. Right. I'm going to go for wet, 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 love is all around. Love is all around, says David. Let's see if that's right, and if it is, let's see how many people said it. There is your red line. Well, it's correct. A very popular song. Yep, 40 is its score. 58, your total. Spent 15 weeks at number one, that did. That's uh, the third most of any song in British chart history. The only ones that have been more everything I do, I do it for you, Brian Adams and I Believe by Frankie Lane. There you are. Mm. Ian. Now then. Ian, what do you do, Ian? Um, I'm a director of finance for a bit of a professional services firm in London. A bit of a professional services yeah, firm? Yeah, so not the whole thing. I see. Oh, I see, right. And when you're not doing that, Ian, what do you do? Um, I like... Um, well, I've, I watch a lot of football to begin with. When I'm not doing that, I like English nature. I like travelling very much as well. OK, and how did you and Jessica meet, Ian? Well, we met online, came together, and I proposed to Jessica <laughs> two days after I met her. Wow. Get, get your tissues out. <laughs> wow. Um, you said yes after two days. Well, I did, but then I sort of... Yeah, I sort of thought, oh, what have I done? But actually, <laughs> no, <laughs> it was OK, so... And how long fine. ago was that? Uh, 2001, so... Oh, well, congratulations. Very well done, indeed. Now... We are looking for these UK number one singles with the word love in their titles. Uh, Ian, what are you going to go for? Not the best uh, subject for me. Uh, I only know two on the board. Luckily, they've not gone. Um, so I think this is right. I'm going to say 10cc, I'm not in love. 10cc, I'm not in love, says Ian. Now, the high scorers at the moment are David and Chris on 58. You're on 35, so 22 or less sees you through. There's your red line. 
Let's see if I'm not in love is right. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. It is right. 34. 34 takes your total up to 69. It's a pretty good answer, but 34 is quite a big score, isn't it? I've had, literally had that song in my head since the question came up. Mm. It's all I can... Uh, I should really be concentrating on the show. <laughs> it's a beautiful That's song, right. isn't it? But you couldn't, no couple could have that as their song. No. No. They go, what's your, what's your, what was the first answer at your wedding? Oh, we, um, I'm not in love, 10cc. <laughs> <laughs> now, Alex, you were chosen by Vicky. What's your, what's your specialist area? What are you going to be particularly good at? Um, Why do you think she chose you? Well, anything to do with films, um, especially the Oscars, quite, um, quite knowledgeable of. Um, British history um, from around 1870, pre-war, pre-World War II. Um, so, yeah, we're looking for those two subjects. <laughs> OK, those two. And what do you do, Alex? Um, I'm just about to graduate with a PR degree, um, and I'm also a PR executive at a PR consultancy. Excellent. Right, well, that board is all yours. OK, well, I knew the three that are gone, and um, I know one more, definitely, but I know it'll be a high answer, so I'm going to have to go... You can talk us through them if you take like. ...take a bit of a risk. I think the Jennifer Rush one is Power of Love, but I'm going to take a bit of a risk and go Dusty Springfield, um, The Look of Love. The Look of Love. The Look of Love. OK, now, there is your red line. If you get below that, you are through to the next round. Let's see if The Look of Love is right, and let's see how many people said it, if it is. Oh, bad luck. Bad luck, Alex. I'm afraid that's an incorrect answer. And it scores you the maximum of 100 points. That takes your total up to 130. Richard. That's really unlucky, Alex. She did, uh, she did record the look of love, but her only UK number one was You Don't Have to Say You Love Me. Ah. Uh, would have scored seven points. You were right about Jennifer Rush. That's uh, The Power of Love. Would have scored 41 points. I would just have seen you knocked out as well, so you couldn't have gone for it. Stevie Wonder down the bottom there is I Just Called to Say I Love You. 31 points. And uh, Renny and Renato, do you know that one? Save Your Save Love. Save Your Love. Save Your Love. Would we'll score 15 points. So the best answer up there is Crazy in Love. Thanks very much indeed, Richard. So at the end of our first round, I'm afraid our losing pair with a high score of 130, it's Alex and Vicky. Dear, oh dear, that was really unfortunate. I mean, good of you to know that, uh, that, that, that look of love version. But uh, yes, annoying that wasn't her number one. Um, we have to say goodbye to you now, but we'll see you again next time. Thanks very much for playing Meantime. Alex and Vicky, great contestants. <laughs> but for the remaining three pairs, it's now time for round two. Now, obviously, there's only going to be room for two pairs in our head-to-head -head round, so one of the pairs in front of me will be leaving us at the end of this round. Well, Becky and Sam, mm. that was an exemplary first round mm. there, and lovely low score with Beyonce. Yeah. I was very surprised. Five. I only know. five people. Mm. Popular song. Yeah, you'd have thought. Um, uh, well done, David and Chris, Ian and Jessica. A little bit of catching up to do as our new pairs. Are you ready for round two? Very much so. OK, very best of luck. Our category for round two is... North America. North America. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, let's find out what the question is. Here it comes. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many US-Canadian border states, provinces and territories as they could. Richard. We're looking for any US state or any Canadian province or territory that lies on the border between the USA and Canada please. So in a US state or Canadian province or territory that lies on that border, uh, that includes both land borders and water borders. Very best of luck. OK, thanks very much indeed. Now, Ian, how is your North American geography? Um, hopefully pretty good. Uh, we travel to North America quite a lot. It's our favourite holiday destination. OK, good. Both sides of the border. Good. OK, well, let's have a nice obscure answer from you then, Ian. Um, I'm going to say New Brunswick. New Brunswick, says Ian. Let's see if New Brunswick is right. Let's see how many people said it. It is right. It's a good answer, Ian. Look at that. Down it goes. Pointless. Very, very well done indeed. A pointless answer adds £250 to today's jackpot, takes the total up to £3,250, and it scores you nothing. What an exemplary start. Fantastic. Richard. That's terrific stuff, Ian. Well played. You've absolutely terrified everyone else there. I hope you know that. <laughs> yeah, it's on the eastern seaboard of North America, New Brunswick. Excellent. Now then, Chris. 
Yes. Chris. <laughs> um, not my strong point, but I'm going to have a pop at uh, Ontario. Ontario, says Chris. Ontario. I'm trying to read Ian's face to see if that's right or not. Ontario. Let's see if it is. If it is, let's see how many people said Ontario. It's right. <laughs> 19. Not bad. It's a good answer. The second largest province in Canada. All sorts of famous people from Ontario. Jim Carrey, Mike Myers, Justin Bieber. Yeah. We have a lot to be thankful to Ontario for. Yeah. Good. Uh, Becky. Becky, how are we feeling about this? Not too bad. I'm just trying to picture the geography in my head. Um, I think I'm going to go for Michigan. Michigan. Mm. Yeah. Michigan. OK, let's see if that's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said it. It is right. <laughs> 17. Well played, Becky. 17 from Michigan. Well played, everybody, on that first pass. Yeah, Michigan. It's got 64,000 inland lakes, Michigan. That's, that's a, a lot, lot of, of inland that's lakes. That's a lot, isn't it? isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Imagine. Yeah. Also, someone counted them at some point as well. That's a job and a half. Mm. Uh, now, we're halfway through the round. Let's take a look at those scores. Nothing is our best score there. Ian, very, very well done. I'd say Ian and Jessica looking pretty good at this stage. Then up to 17, where we find Becky and Sam. Then up to 19, where we find Chris and David. So Sam and David is going to be between the pair of you, I would say, to see who stays and who leaves at the end of this round. Uh, OK, we're going to come back down the line now. Can the second players please take their places at the podium? OK, remember, we are looking for states, provinces and territories on the US-Canadian border. Sam. Difficult to know whether to go for Canadian or US one. Um, spent a bit of time in Canada when I was my young my young days. Um, I think I'm actually going to go for uh, Washington State. Washington State. Yeah. Okay, Washington State. Well, you're only two behind, Dave and Chris. They are on 19. You're on 17. If you can score one or less with Washington State, <laughs> you will avoid becoming the new high scorers. There is your red line right at the bottom. Uh, but let's see if it's right. Uh, how many people said Washington State? Yes, it's right. Not bad. 20. 20. 37 your total. Another strong answer. We've got three good teams here today. It's in the far northwest of uh, America. It's the only American state to be named after a president. David. Not really sure. Some of the ones I was going to say have already gone. I'm going to try British Columbia. British Columbia, says David. Let's see if British Columbia is right. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. You're on 19. The high scorers are Sam and Becky on 37. 17 or less will keep you in the game. There's your red line. British Columbia. It's right. Very well done. Nine. Good work. 28 to your total. Very well played, yeah. Perched just above Washington State, in fact, in uh, the west of Canada. Jessica. Jessica. Well, you're on nothing, Jessica. The high scorers are Sam and Becky on 37. If you can score 36 or less, you will avoid overtaking them. And you'll be through to the head-to-head. -head. OK, I'll go for Manitoba. Manitoba, says Jessica. Manitoba, here is your red line. If you get below that, you're in the head-to-head. -head. Let's see how many people said Manitoba. He's right. Very well done, you're in the head-to-head. -head. Four. <laughs> Very well played. Four is your total. Bang in the middle of that border, uh, Manitoba. Winnipeg is the capital. Um, now, we've already heard one point this answer, uh, which was New Brunswick, which is a terrific uh, answer, even more terrific when you discover there is only one point this answer. And that was it. So you've got the only one up there. Amazing work. Uh, New Hampshire would have scored you one, and the Yukon would have scored you one. A few other low scorers, Idaho would have scored one. You'd have got two points for Pennsylvania or Vermont. Uh, let's take a look at the top three answers, the ones that most of our 100 people said. Ontario, we've already heard at 19. Washington, we've already heard at 20. And right at the top, Alaska, which does have a border, would have scored you 24 points. 
Thank you very much indeed. Uh, so I'm afraid Becky and Sam, at the end of our second round, you are our high scoring pair. Only thought 37 though, not a bad total. Um, but we had some really good answers. Uh, yes, Ian really set the, set the bar at quite a hard level. But I'm afraid we have to say goodbye to you and this is your second show. But it's been lovely having you on the show. Thank you both Thank so you. much for playing. So Sam and Becky. But for the remaining two pairs, it's now time for our head to head. Congratulations, Ian and Jessica, David and Chris. You are now only one round away from the final and a chance to play for our jackpot, which currently stands at £3,250. <laughs> so, to decide who gets to play for that money, you are now going to go head to head. The big difference is you're now allowed to confer. And the first pair to win two questions will be playing for that jackpot. Well, Ian and Jessica, your first appearance on the show, and here you are with the lowest scorers so far. Uh, that was brilliant. The, the US-Canada border lucky round. Lucky for us. Yeah, it was very, very lucky, lucky category. I couldn't well, believe it when I saw it come up. Oh, well, you did so well. New Brunswick, very lucky. Oh, David, I've just remembered, last time you were on the show, we discovered that you write limericks. I do, indeed. You're a regular limericist, if such a thing <laughs> exists. And, uh, and I said, I asked you to write one. Uh, you did, and indeed. I, I, then, I never then came back to you. Have, you. have you written one? Did you write one? I did. Go on, let's hear it, let's hear it. Good. <laughs> I'm going on a game show, and it really will be fun. Quite the most exciting thing that I have ever done. I'll try and get the answers right, and avoid the strain and stress. I won't let it spoil my special day, because that would be pointless. Yeah, oh, well, there we are. Very well done. <laughs> Excellent. Well, best of luck to both pairs. Let's play the head-to-head. -head. OK, here's your first question, and it concerns sports commentators. Sports commentators, Richard. I'm going to show you five pictures now of famous sports commentators, past and present. Can you give us their full names, please? Best of luck. OK, let's reveal our five sports commentators, and here they are. We have got... A. B. C. D. And E. There we are. Five sports commentator. Ian and Jessica, you've played best throughout the show so far, so you get to go first. We're struggling a bit here. Um, we'll go with A and say it's Lisa Riley. A, Lisa Riley. A, Lisa Riley. David and Chris, can you talk us through the board? Right. B, Gabby Logan. And we think B is Gabby Logan. I think A is Hazel Irving. D is Bobby George. E is Jenny Pittman. And C looks crickety. Is Jonathan Agnew. Which are you going to go for? D, Bobby George. D, Bobby George, say David and Chris. So Ian and Jessica have said Lisa Riley for A. Let's see if that's right, Lisa Riley. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. No, it's not Lisa Riley, I'm afraid, which means, David and Chris, you merely have to be correct with D, Bobby George, and you will win this question. Let's see if you are correct. Yep, well done. 25. 25 for Bobby George, very well done, David and Chris. After one question, you are up 1-0. Uh, well played, guys. Yeah, Lisa Riley, that's... Uh... That's incorrect for a number of reasons. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to go for Claire Balding. But... Uh, Lisa, Lisa Riley is the, the ex Emmerdale actress and you've been framed presenter who was on Strictly Come Dancing. <laughs> and I have to say, she, she doesn't bear a huge resemblance to <laughs> Hazel Irvin either. But that's the lovely Hazel Irvin who does uh, golf and snooker, has been on Pointless Celebrities. Um, she's fantastic. She scored 10 points. B was Gabby Logan. She would have scored you a few more. She would have scored you 29. Uh, you were right, guys, about C. Would have been a brilliant answer as well. Best answer up there, Jonathan Agnew. Would have scored you four point, the cricket commentator. There's Bobby George. And E, it's not Jenny Pittman, as you said. It's oh, Claire Balding, of course. Um, would have scored 52, so that's the biggest score up there as well. Thanks very much indeed. OK, here comes your second question. Now, Ian and Jessica, you have to win this one to stay in the game. It concerns... Mussolini. Mussolini. Richard. Yeah, from Bobby George to Mussolini. You, you can't <laughs> say we haven't got breadth on this show. We're going to show you five clues now to facts about Mussolini. Can you give us the most obscure answer? Good luck. 
OK, here are our five clues to facts about Mussolini, and they are... The decade of the 1800s he was born in, the country he led from 1922 to 43, the socialist newspaper of which he was appointed editor in 1912, the two-word title meaning the leader that he took for himself in 1925, and the modern-day name of Abyssinia, invaded by Mussolini in 1935. I'll read those all one last time. The decade in the 1800s he was born in, the country he led from 1922 to 43, the socialist newspaper of which he was appointed editor in 1912, the two-word title meaning the leader that he took for himself in 1925, and the modern-day name of Abyssinia, invaded by Mussolini in 1935. So there we are, five clues to facts about Mussolini. David and Chris, you go first this time. What do you know? Right, I think we've learnt our lesson from the last round. We're going to go with uh, Il Duce for the leader. Il Duce. OK, Il Duce, say David and Chris. Ian and Jessica, talk us through the board if you can. Um, I don't know the decade of the 1800s. I'd guess it'd be the 1890s, perhaps. Country led Italy, socialist newspaper. We don't know, do we? No, I don't know. Um, I think Il Duce is right. That's perhaps what we would have said. I think we'll have to go for Ethiopia for the last one. Ethiopia, say Ian and Jessica. OK, David and Chris have said Il Duce. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many of our 100 said Il Duce. He's right. <laughs> 24. Uh, Ian and Jessica have said Ethiopia is the modern-day name for Abyssinia. Let's see if that's right, and if it is, let's see how many people said that. It's right. Oh, look at that, 20. Very well done. Ian and Jessica, that's what you had to do. You won the point, and after two questions, it's one all. This is a cracking head-to-head. -head. Well played, both teams there. Let's fill in the rest of the board. Uh, he was born in the 1880s. Would have scored you 19 points. Very well done to 100 people there. Uh, the country he led was Italy, of course. That was a bigger scorer. Would have scored you 69. The best answer on the board. Uh, congratulations to anyone who knows the socialist newspaper he was uh, editor of was Avanti. Would have scored one point. None of our newspapers have exclamation marks after them. Such a shame. <laughs> Don't you think it'd be good? The Guardian! <laughs> That'd be good, wouldn't it? Yeah, I just think it might be. OK, here's your third question. This is the decider. Whoever wins this goes through to the final and plays for that jackpot. Best of luck, both pairs. It concerns films of the 1980s. Films of the 1980s, Richard. We're going to show you the names of five films from the 1980s now, but we've mixed up the letters. I'm afraid they're all in anagram form. Can you unscramble them and give us the correct answers? Good luck. OK, let's reveal our five anagrams of films from the 1980s. And here they are. We have got Saline, 1986. Go Punt, 1986. Gusset Throbs, 1984. <laughs> Ma Ran In, 1988. And uh, Orifice Froths, 1981. <laughs> I'll read those again. Saline, 1986. Go Punt, 1986. Gusset Throbs, 1984. Ma Ran In, 1988. And uh, Orifice Froths, 1981. There we are. Five film titles from the 1980s in anagram form. Ian and Jessica, you go first this time. Um, we think number three is Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters. Gusset throbs, Ghostbusters. David and Chris, it's over to you. Top one's Aliens, second one's Top Gun, fourth one is Rain Man. Struggling a bit with the last one. Um, Oh, let's have a punt at Rain Man. Rain Man. OK, yeah. so we have Ghostbusters and Rain Man. Ian and Jessica went with Ghostbusters. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. Absolutely right. Seven. <laughs> Not bad at all. Seven. David and Chris have gone for Rain Man. Let's see how many people said that. Oh. 63. 63. Very well done, Ian and Jessica. After three questions, you are through to the final 
Yeah, Gus, it's Robs is a great answer. There's only one answer that would have won you the points there. It's the one you didn't know as well. Let's fill in the ones you did know. Saline, as you say, was Aliens. Would have scored 18. Go Punt was Top Gun. That would have scored you 23. Now it's two points down the bottom. Well done to anyone who said Chariots of Fire. Oh, no. Chariots of Fire for two points. Oh, wow. I've written a little poem, if you don't mind me reading it. Yes, go on. Bobby George was very good. Il Duce, very brave. But Gusset Throbs just won the day, so farewell, Chris and Dave. Oh. <laughs> Well, there's not much I can really add to that, <laughs> but uh, uh, the pair leaving us, as you will have gathered, I'm afraid, is uh, Chris and Dave. It's been lovely having you on the show. Thank you both so much for playing. Brilliant. My pleasure. Thank you. But for Ian and Jessica, it's now time for our pointless final. <laughs> Congratulations, Ian and Jessica. You've seen off all the competition and you've won our coveted pointless trophy. You now have a chance to win our pointless jackpot. And at the end of today's show, the jackpot stands at £3,250. <laughs> well, you've done incredibly well. Some lovely low scoring from you throughout the show, including a pointless answer for New Brunswick, which was fantastic, and four points for Manitoba. That was a brilliant round for you two. Can we have it again? Yeah, uh, yeah maybe, <laughs> maybe. Uh, now, to win that money, all you have to do is find a pointless answer. First, though, you have to choose a category, and you have five options. They are indie music, poetry, tennis stars, transport, international borders. Oh, international borders. It's been very kind to you. It has. It's, it's extremely tempting, isn't it? Or oh, but it might be a border from somewhere that's not North America. <laughs> that, there's, a, there's, there's, there's always, always that risk, that risk isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Um, well, not... OK, well, indie music we, we sort of like, but will be useless. Poetry... No. Never written no. Jessica no. Poe. <laughs> Tennis stars don't know enough. Transport might be good for us, but I still think we should go for international borders. OK, fine. So... International borders it is. OK, here it comes. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many countries that border a country beginning with S as they could. Richard. Yeah, we're looking for any country that shares a land border with any other country whose name begins with S. We're just looking for the main country beginning with S, not any overseas dependencies or territories, anything like that. So any country that borders another country whose normal English name begins with an S. As always, by country, we mean a sovereign state that is a member of the UN in its own right. OK, you now have up to one minute to come up with three answers, and all you need to win that £3,250 is for just one of those answers to be pointless. Are you ready? OK, let's put 60 seconds on the clock. There they are. Your time starts now. OK, I think of um, countries in Africa. Swaziland. So Swaziland, does that border Mozambique? Or is it South Italy? Africa. Yeah, South Africa. Um, I was going to, thinking that South Sudan borders Sudan. Sudan, yeah. The Gambia borders Senegal. What else borders South Sudan? Um, Eritrea? Um, probably the Central African Republic, quite possibly. Do you think so? Well, no, but it's one of Sudan or South Sudan, I think. Okay. Yes, we can take a risk on that. We go Central okay. African Republic. Okay. The Gambia. The Gambia. Kind of surrounded by Senegal. Right. Okay. And um, do you want to go anywhere else in the world? Um, um, what about Suriname? What is it? Um, border. Does that border? Guyana. Right? Yeah, that's a good one. Let's go for Guyana. Guyana. I'm sure, I'm sure it's it's Guyana. Pointless, it? Well, we'll see. That's good. Um, Ten seconds left. Okay, let's do those. Anything better? No, let's go for those. Syria, no. no. No, OK. Okay. OK, you've fixed on your three. Yeah. Well, well your, your time is up. We were looking for countries that border countries beginning with S. I now need your three answers. We would like to go with Guyana. Guyana. Uh, the Gambia. The Gambia. And we'll take a punt on the pointless favourite of Central African Republic. Central African Republic. Oh, it's always the right thing <laughs> to say. It's got to be worth a punt, isn't it? It's always worth a punt. Of those three, which is your best shot at a pointless answer? I don't know. Do you think people might start cottoning on to the Central African Republic? Yeah. It's Not when point. it borders a country beginning with S, they won't. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should go for okay. the Gambia is the best one. OK, oh, right. the Gambia, last. Which we put first? You're least likely. I think Central African Republic, because it was a lazy answer, we don't really know, we just thought we'd put it in. All OK, right. we'll put that first, Central African <laughs> Republic, and uh, we've got Guyana in the middle. Yes. 
OK, let's put them up on the board in that order, and here they are. We have got Central African Republic, Guyana and the Gambia. So we were looking for countries that border countries beginning with S. Now, you only have to find one pointless answer to win that jackpot of £3,250. What would you do with £3,250 in? I mean, everybody always says, well, I'd go on holiday, but we do love travel. That's our one... <laughs> so everyone always says they go on holiday, but we really will go. <laughs> we, 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 we really mean it. OK. Well, very best of luck. Three very good answers up there. Let's hope at least one of them is pointless. Your first answer, your least confident answer, was Central African Republic. Let's find out. Is it right? And if it is, how many people said it? Oh, it's right. Now, Central African Republic has won principal function on this game, and that is to be pointless. Is it going to be pointless today? Is it? And yes, it is! <laughs> <laughs> very, very well done indeed. <laughs> that is absolutely brilliant. Very, very well Thank done. You. Excellent. Well, Safari, here we come. <laughs> Superb. Many, many congratulations. Central African Republic was indeed a pointless answer, which means you go home with our jackpot of £3,250. Very well done indeed. <laughs> well, it sounds like your geography is pretty good, but uh, let's find out from Richard. That was, that was brilliant, Ian and Jessica. As you say, you know, Central African Republic, we say time and time again, always go for it. It's the first time it's ever actually won the jackpot, though, <laughs> which is very, very impressive. Your other two answers, Guyana, Trivic answer, as you say, it, uh, it's uh, next to Suriname, would have scored two points. And the Gambia, which uh, has the border with Senegal, would have scored you one point. Oh. So it was your only chance there. Very, very well played. Let's take a look at some of the other pointless answers. I think you'd have got, you, you played terrifically well throughout the whole show. So um, Bulgaria, which um, borders Serbia, Central African Republic, there you go. It borders South Sudan and Sudan. Chad, which borders Sudan. Djibouti, which borders Somalia. Uh, Guinea, which borders uh, Senegal and Sierra Leone. Lebanon, that borders Syria. Liberia, that borders Sierra Leone. Libya, that borders Sudan. And Mali, which borders Senegal. There's another couple of answers. The Democratic Republic of the Congo borders South Sudan. And the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia borders Serbia. Very well done if you've got any of those. But congratulations to you two. £3,250. Central African Republic, I could not be happier. <laughs> Very, very well done indeed. Well, thanks once again to our winning players, Ian and Jessica, who go away with today's jackpot of £3,250. <laughs> Join us next time when we'll be putting more obscure knowledge to the test on Pointless. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>